Senator, let's bring in Wyoming Senator John Barrasso. He's on the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate. So we're sending Abrams' main battle tanks to Ukraine. Now Zelensky is saying, well, you know, got the Abrams. I'd like some F-16s as well. And he's still clamoring for the Attackums, long-range uh, artillery rockets. Now that we've given our main battle tank, or we're giving our main battle tank to Ukraine, is there any limit? I mean, short of nuclear weapons, but we're prepared to give to Ukraine. Well, I'm 100 percent in support of giving the Abrams tanks to Ukraine so they can use those and other tools that they need of war to take back their country from Russia. And, and I think that uh, we should have done this months ago. The request has been in there for months. There's been a bipartisan effort in the House and the Senate to get this done uh, with regard to Ukraine. You know, Joe Biden has been too slow, Joe, all the way through, even before the invasion Began. So when so, you come down at F-16? Well, let's get one step at a time. Here we are with this, because the, to your point, the world is watching. And China is seeing how we respond in terms of what they decide to do with Taiwan. North Korea is watching in terms of when they decide what they're going to do about, about uh, South Korea. We had a hearing today in the Foreign Relations Committee all about Russian aggression. And the bottom line is... Russia is not going to stop until they are stopped, and that means Vladimir Putin. The Ukrainian people have put forth a plan for peace, but what we know is if the Russians stopped fighting today, it, the war would be over. If, yeah, but they, but there's if, also if the school thought that they, they regroup and resupply yeah. and then they go back yeah. to Ukraine. Yeah. That's, if Ukrainians stopped fighting today, Ukraine would be over. Yeah, no, there's no question about that. Uh, you, you, you said uh, to the point that I was making that the world was watching. It was actually a point that we made while we were uh, listening to Trey Yink's fine report. But I'm curious as to why we suddenly decided to send Abrams. And, and Congressman Troy Nels was here la last hour. And he said it doesn't make sense because logistically you need to have so much backup for these that the Ukrainians might not be able to mount it. And I'm wondering, are we sending Abrams because that's what Germany wanted us to do in order to send leopards, which really are the tanks that the Ukrainians need? Well, there was a discussion on that. Basically, the administration has now changed posture, flipped 180 degrees to send tanks that they weren't going to send before. We need to send what they need. They need drones. The administration was slow. Missiles, the administration was slow. Rockets, they were slow. The high Mars, the, the, the highly mobile military launchers, they were slow on that. This has cost lots of lives. It's come out in the hearing today in Ukraine by the people just delayed their success in eliminating and removing Russia from their own territory. I wanted to ask you about uh, something else uh, that you are very, very familiar with, and that's energy and gas in the United States. You are introducing a measure that would limit the ability of the president to tap the strategic petroleum reserve. It, it, it would mean that he would only be able to do it in times of real emergency uh, energy crisis, wouldn't be able to do it just to lower the price of gas, uh, wouldn't be able to sell it to countries like China, that any releases from the SPRO would be tied to developing oil and gas leases on federal land. Here's what Jennifer Granholm said about a similar measure in the House that Kathy McMorris Rogers is introducing. I'll be very clear. If Congress were to pass H.R. 21, the president would veto it. He would not allow the American people to suffer because of the backwards agenda that the House Republicans are advancing. Is, is tying the strategic, is, is using the strategic petroleum reserve for what it's intended backwards? No, no, not at all. You started the report today, earlier today, that gas prices are up 40 cents in this last month. People want affordable energy, available energy, reliable energy, and Joe Biden basically has lit dynamite under the American energy in industry the day he came into office. Uh, he did it by, you know, throttling the Keystone pipeline, stopping oil and gas permits, and what happened? Prices went up, and, and, and yet, people got furious. And yet Jennifer Granholm's blaming y'all for that. Yeah. So the prices went up. So what did the president do? He panicked and he said, we got to release a lot of energy from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. He released enough that we're now at a 40-year low, which means we're at a 40-year high vulnerability. To yeah, a 40-year low in actually the reserve. In the reserves the and, right. and a 40-year high of our vulnerability because he didn't use it for an emergency if an emergency really arrived. We have plenty of it energy in the ground, Wyoming, energy breadbasket of America, other states as well. So the legislation that I've introduced, every Republican on the Energy Committee has signed on to it, and it's to do exactly what you said. The Strategic Petroleum Reserve is for emergencies only. If they need to tap into it, they need to start drilling for oil and gas on public lands to replace what they take out of it. Because he's talking about releasing more now, too. Senator, safe travels back to great. the great state of Wyoming. I'll be there tonight. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks. Thanks.